My name is Elizabeth Strangio Harris. I'm currently at San Jose State University and Mission College in Santa Clara. I'm a lecturer, a full-time position at San Jose State and part-time at, at Mission. I'm using a fabulous book called Stand Up and Speak and I used two chapters last semester at San Jose State, comparing them to the book that we were required to use. And this semester, I'm using the entire book uh, for both of my classes at Mission College, and I'm already finding it to be quite beneficial. There was a call out for book reviews, I think, uh, about a year and a half ago, and I signed up for that. And then they had led me to an OER site, which I could not get enough of, so I, I kept looking at that. And then came a call if anyone wanted to try using these uh, texts in their, their classrooms, and I signed up immediately. I wasn't sure how they would, the students would do reading online. And I wanted to know if the chapters they thought were comparable to the ones that they could use in their hand, and it turned out they, they liked it just as well, if not better. The classes, uh, the syllabus for the classes looks kind of like this, and I have embedded the book right into the syllabus, so it's right there for them. Then you can tell when the homework is going to be due and what chapters they should be reading a little further down. So that works out pretty well. No, uh, I use the book online because they can do all their homework and reading and then come to class ready to do engagements and assignments that we can use the face-to-face -face time with. I've also used the two chapters in what are called hybrid courses where I only meet them once a week instead of face-to-face. And I, I can't waste any time bringing the book into it. They already have had to have done the, uh, the readings, the extra little quizzes, the takeaways, so we can discuss. The face-to-face -face time is so important. I don't want to use it for a quiz. I don't want to use it for anything that, that makes us sit and be separate. I need them to be engaged and together and, and involved. So this is the Stand Up, Speak, the Practice and Ethics of Public Speaking. It's the OER. Uh, like I said, the first couple of things that they do, why, you know, why is public speaking important? It kind of sets the stage. It gets them ready to engage, actually. We talk about Berlow's model of, an, of uh, communication. We talk about just the fact that they can't, if this is public speaking, not public reading, I have to really talk about that to them. So this is pretty much what we talk about, uh, the channel, the message, the feedback that is so important. And that's just, that's just everyday normal things. So the first uh, big assignment that I assign is actually chapter two, which is on ethics. So don't get sick. Close your, close your mind here. And the reason is because they, they will become more powerful. And to me, it's the most important thing that they'd be an ethical speaker. Uh, chapter two even talks about the National Communication Association. Um, the next chapter that I used was um, on research and how to cite your sources so they could avoid plagiarism. Uh, they become better critical listeners. Like I said, ethics is the, is the first assignment and it travels all the way through the class uh, because the first speaking engagement is probably you know, it's just a few minutes long, and they find out that they don't actually faint, and they get, you know, they get a little used to it. But the last one is a persuasive speech where they actually have to persuade us to do something, to move away from the status quo. And they, I'm hoping that it's not going to be something horrendous, but to be an ethical uh, proposition that they're presenting. Yes, uh, they have two speeches that uh, are part of an assignment called <clears throat> Change the World. And on the first day of class, I, I tell them that's what they have to do in this class. It's where, what would they do if they could change anything? So they're informative speech. Uh, it proves the existence of some one thing, whether it's an organization, a hospital, a concept, I don't know. And their, their last speech is to persuade us to do something about it. 
if you were to go like in chapter seven, you'd get the research and why it's important. It's a very large book, but that's because it just got so many cool little things. Uh, the takeaways at the end of the chapters. Um, it, I have to say it doesn't have as many pictures in it as you would think a long book would have. Mm -hmm. I think they would take advantage of that, but they didn't. Uh, but they do have uh, self-quizzing uh, uh, capabilities. So you can like, take the little quiz and think, oh, did I get that example? Or look at the beginning of a chapter. Um, this particular one is uh, kind of a checklist to see if you are speaking ethically and if, did you write your speech that way. So it's a real important little piece that they get every time they, they go to the book. Everyone has read it electronically so far. I did have a student ask if they could print the book. I'm giving them the information about the, the Montezuma Press on Friday because that's the class I meet only once a week. And Very good. I'm going to give them and say, here, you can print it. The OER text is far superior to the one that they have in hand. And the cost, I was so dismayed when the, the, it was presented as if it wouldn't cost that much, and they changed the edition. And it, there were no last year editions. It was like $100. 30 students to a classroom, and that's just a lot of money. And I didn't find it that valuable. I said, don't even bother reading some of the chapters. Close to, close to 30 uh, students per class, seven classes, pretty much. Sometimes there's 26, sometimes there's 28, sometimes there's 32, so it all pretty much adds up. It gets to be a lot of money, especially since the hardbound book, they continually want to um, bundle it with things that are online anyway, where once you're online, you can just stay online and go any place you need to go, if that's what you needed to do. <laughs> uh, I've never had one say so far that they couldn't read the chapters because it's all in their syllabus. Um, so that was pretty nice. Because they all have the same book and they have access to it on any digital device that they have, they can access it in class between themselves if they need something clarified, which is wonderful. We just had a midterm today, and that's exactly what they did. Tablets, cell phones, and even nice little laptops. And again, one student wants to uh, print the book, and I said, all right, I'm going to get that for her. So it's, it's, a nice, it's just a nice way to, to give them something they don't have to one more thing, one more headache that a student doesn't have to worry about. I would love to, if I could find the time, I would put a lot online, OER, I would. I don't know where I'm going to find the next 10 minutes sometimes, so. But maybe I could collaborate with someone, we all get together and start writing chapters. <laughs>